mile fiber network and a couple of wireless towers across this vast rural county, home to 45,000 people. Pretty ambitious for the Osage Nation's brand new broadband department called Wajaji Connect, especially because getting your hands on fiber optic cable these days is like trying to track down a pack of toilet paper in March of 2020. Gives you a little bit of anxiety not knowing when these materials are going to show up and if they'll show up on time. Kelby Witham, a project manager with Wajaji Connect, says supply chain issues combined with a sudden surge in demand have complicated things. She points to the giant spools of orange tubing lying around this job site. Oh, so conduit. This conduit is what protects the fiber in the ground. So the lead times on those were, you know, anywhere 90 to 120 days, even a year on some of the vendors that we were checking. And this team is working on a deadline. They have two years to spend more than 50 million federal grant dollars on this project. If we're not able to meet those timelines, I mean, that could be the difference in us, you know, losing our project or losing our funding. It's a lot of pressure, says James Trumbly, who heads up Wajaji Connect. Because all the outside attention and resources on tribes' connectivity woes won't last forever. I don't think there'll ever be this type of investment, especially my lifetime. You know, I'm 68, so it's... But I don't even think in your lifetime... Don't let a good emergency go to waste, right? Matthew Rantanen is broadband advisor with the Southern California Tribal Chairmen's Association. I don't know that we would have gotten the foundational dollars had COVID not happened. He says it shouldn't have taken a crisis for the feds to take notice. So tribes have always been without, right? Tribal people know they got to drive down to town and go to McDonald's or Starbucks or whatever your flavor of choice is to get free Wi-Fi. Better late than never, he says, when it comes to federal funding. But he says it's frustrating to wait so long only to face novel supply chain constraints, plus competition with states who are also flush with federal broadband money and trying to buy all the same stuff. We saw delays in product availability uh, during the pandemic of over a year um, to the point where products phased out of their lifetime before they were delivered. Um, That's how weird it got. And once tribes cleared that hurdle, they still have to find enough labor to carry out these projects on a deadline. You know the game Hungry Hungry Hippo and all the marbles and all the hippos try to eat the marbles? He says that's what it's like trying to hire a broadband project manager or technician right now. And rural tribes like Osage Nation are at a major disadvantage, says James Trumbly with Wajaji Connect. It's going to be very difficult to entice somebody to move from a Dallas to a Pahuska, you know, I mean, it, it, it's virtually impossible. So they started a training program with the local technical college, which they hope will create the workforce they need to build and maintain a fiber network. People that are already here, we can get them trained, we can get them the skill sets. People like Sharla Lockman, who's connecting elders' homes to fiber. She's an Osage citizen, background in IT. Osage Nation just paid her to take that fiber optic installation training, and she thinks she's found a new career. I really enjoy this work. This is an opportunity for me to go further in my previous education, and there's a whole big world out there of opportunities. This might be one silver lining to the chaos. Lockman and other successful trainees can count on years of steady, good-paying work right here on Osage Nation. In Pahuska, Oklahoma, I'm Savannah Marr for Marketplace. Even if inflation is slowing, prices for many things are still significantly higher than they used to be, like cars. While the chip shortage that constrained inventory during the pandemic has eased up a bit, the price of new cars is still pretty high. A new report from auto research site Edmonds says the entry-level price for a new vehicle, once $20,000, is now $25,000, and the average buyer is spending much more. Marketplace's Christian Schwab looks at this one. During the great car shortage over the last couple years, automakers used their very limited supply of semiconductor chips for their newest, shiniest, fanciest cars. Because if they can't sell as many, they want to sell the more expensive versions of them. 
Mike Ramsey is an automotive analyst at Gartner, and he says somewhere along the way, companies stopped focusing on more affordable sedans altogether. The Ford Fiesta, the Ford Focus, the Ford Fusion. The Mustang is the only traditional car Ford has not discontinued. Most automakers are focusing on trucks and SUVs, and it feels kind of like a chicken and an egg thing. Are people buying bigger vehicles because that's what's available? Or are companies making them because that's what people want? Jane Ulitskaya is an editor at Cars.com. All of the above, I think automakers definitely turn to the most popular models. She says trucks and SUVs made up nearly 80% of new car sales in March. An auto research site Edmunds says of those large SUV sales, more than 90% cost more than $60,000. Michelle Krebs is an analyst at Cox Automotive. The new car buyer is a fairly affluent buyer, and those buyers tend to want big sport utility vehicles with the fancy features, and the luxury part of the market has really grown. Krebs expects the trend to stay, which means average vehicle sale prices aren't likely to return to pre-pandemic levels. It's like gas prices. The prices go way up, but they don't come down to where they used to be, and we just get used to it. One bit of relief, the sticker price is not always what you pay. As interest rates rise, incentives like rebates and lease deals are returning. I'm Kristen Schwab for Marketplace. In the retail world, when it comes to toys, after Christmas, the next big season is Easter. The National Retail Federation predicts that consumers will spend as much as $24 billion around Easter this year, and nearly $4 billion of that will be spent on gifts like toys. So we decided to check in with Irene Kesselman at Alley Cat Toys in Carborough, North Carolina. We have had Easter on the floor now for over a month, and it's been going well. We offer a bunny buffet that we set up in the middle of the store. Everything from Easter candy to Easter jewelry, Easter sticker books, and of course, plenty of stuffed bunnies. Our inventory right now is probably a little higher than I would like it to be. I attribute that to having bought a lot of items that, whether it was in shipping or the prices of the Uh, The toys themselves, the items that I bought, were given at a discount. Um, I decided that I would bring them in, have them, and store them, and we would just fill in as we needed them. Our staffing right now is, is, I think we're in a really good position. Um, We have some part-timers along with the, the staff that I've had for many years, and the people that have come in for part-time work have really worked out well and are 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 getting things done in the the hours that they can give us while they're not in school. Biggest challenge right now, I would have to say, is um, finding some new items that we've never had in the store before, you know, to get the customer, especially the younger customer, to continue to come in and see what's new and exciting. In fact, one of my manager was putting out some stuffed animals today and as she was putting them on a shelf a young girl came in and said did you finally get the stuffed lobster in yes a stuffed lobster and um my manager was able just to hand it to her and say yes it just came in and she said i've been waiting for this for so long so that was nice to see but um you know keeping on top of trends and just things that i think are appropriate for our customer is probably going to be uh, the challenge that I have over the next month or so. I would just like to see the traffic continue. Right after Easter, we are getting set up for outdoor in summer. And believe it or not, while I'm purchasing those, I've also written about six or seven Christmas orders already. So I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful for the traffic and looking forward to what the next six months bring. That was Irene Kesselman already putting in Christmas orders at Alley Cat Toys in Carborough, North Carolina.
this final note on the way out today. At the top of the show, we were talking about wages, so let's wrap up there with a new survey out from the Pew Research Center about what happens when people negotiate for their starting salaries. According to Pew, men are slightly more likely to ask for a boost to starting pay compared to women, 32% versus 28%. But there's a bigger gap in what happens next. When people did ask for more money, women were more likely than men to only get what was originally offered, rather than that request turning into more cash. Marketplace is supported by Betterman, offering an FDIC-insured high-yield cash account through program banks built for peace of mind. Betterment is not a bank. Betterment.com slash cash reserve. And by Fortra, a software company dedicated to building a stronger, simpler future for cybersecurity and IT teams around the world. Learn more at fortra.com. Here's your moment of economic context. One more thing when it comes to data on jobs in this economy. The pandemic really threw off the ability of federal number crunchers to do their normal seasonal adjustments to weekly jobless claims, which are pretty volatile anyway. Well, now the Bureau of Labor Statistics seem to have worked out a lot of the kinks, which, as pointed out by Axios, has resulted in some pretty big revisions to recent numbers, with more people filing for unemployment insurance than we previously thought. The job market is still pretty healthy in terms of unemployment, but the new, higher numbers give a bit more evidence that things are slowing down a bit. John Buckley, John Gordon, Rick Carr, Diantha Parker, Amanda Peacher, and Stephanie Seek are the Marketplace editing staff. Amir Babawi is the managing editor, and I'm Kimberly Adams. We'll be back tomorrow. This is APM.